So this was a, about the pits of North Philadelphia. Here where we're sitting was a big junk pile. Just garbage and trash. It was all just a big trash pile. All through here was all just trash. And this is a really wonderful, you know, that there is such transformation. We've tried to be a, a part of that because that provides an opportunity for more human living. Your environment plays a big part in uh, your recovery. You know, right now with being in the, um, the recovery houses, it's sort of like a safe haven. Um, you know, there's always someone there that you can talk to when you're going through something. Um, and that's one of the big things in, in recovery about changing your people, places, and things. When I feel like that I didn't want to get high no more and want to live like I live, and I remember my story. I remember the things I did when I was out to get high, like pushing a shopping cart, sleeping on the street, like um, eating out of garbage cans, you know what I mean? Just walking around all dirty and nasty and stinking and don't care. And like, and I, I, don't, I ain't trying to live that way no more. You can't change people unless they're willing to change. And I think that the evidence for that is very frequently you have people who go through drug treatment programs in prison and come out and as soon as they get back on the streets, they seek out the drugs and they're back in again. It's a revolving door. This process here, uh, there's no hiding. There's no running. You have a community who always wants to know what's going on in your head, how you feel, and uh, when you feel a certain kind of way or if you feel negative about something, you're forced to deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. The strengths of the holistic model are that individuals who are using drugs, there are underlying reasons for why they're using drugs. So the holistic model promotes healing in a various sets of categories and it employs some traditional and non-traditional ways. So for people who may not necessarily view their own addiction as something that is, if once I get these drugs out of me, I'll be fine. Then, or they come to understanding that somehow their emotional life or their spiritual life are what needs to be repaired in order for them to stay. Um, if you know they're interested in staying sober, that's the, that needs to be addressed. They, those programs are extremely successful. We have all kinds of things, work preparation by two great therapists. We have parenting that the Lutherans provide. We have arts and spirituality. We have art classes. We have poetry classes. And we get a social education from KWRU, from Kensington Welfare Rights Union, um, because we do social analysis about the, pro the, the problems that affect, social problems that affect our people most. And that's a good starting point for us to involve our people in the creation of a new society and not just their own new personal life. We got to lift it up people because if we don't go back to them communities and help the ones that made us sick, guess what they said? They wait for us. Right. So like we, we got to lift it up. Y'all want to try it again? Let's try it again. Now I'm going to say a sentence. When I get done, then y'all say it. You cannot fully recover. You cannot fully recover. Unless you help the society. Unless you help the society. That made you sick. That made you sick. Recover. Recover. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. What was the reason you came here? You came here to get some help. I know I came here because I know I needed some help, and I wanted to learn a new way of life. And how about I got that? I wanted somebody to love me and in turn love other people. And they gave me that. Thanks for allowing me to share. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every you are important to me. I need you to survive.